Hey, welcome to today's show, the Matrox Monarch LCS, the Monarch family of pro appliances we're going to talk about too. But the LCS, that's, that's the latest one. It's a real cool product. What the LCS does is it's designed for lecture center capture and streaming. And we're going to go into all the features that it delivers that. But for those of you in the educational space, you definitely want to watch this. Now, you can still use it for other verticals, but where it's really shined is in that educational space. So we're going to go into that on how this product works. So first, let's go over what the product is. It, it, it's an easy to set up and use, set and forget it product that'll allow you to stream live and record directly from any HDMI or SDI or two inputs to go out to recording. You can record to there's a card on it. You can record to a USB device. You can record out over a network. You can also stream to one or two multiple streaming solutions like Facebook or something else. And what I wanted to go over here with this show, we're gonna mention it a lot because we're really focusing on education and the Monarch is the regular price is $24.95, but if you're an educational facility, you can save some money and get it for $23.70, which is really cool. So. Is the Monarch right for you? Where does the Monarch work? The Monarch works in a lot of verticals, folks. It's good for house of worship. It's good for corporate. It's good for government, especially if you're going to be doing uh, taping your own boardroom sessions or things from a single camera like that. But where it really shines and stands out and sets itself apart from all of the products is the ability to allow a teacher to record and stream their lectures in a set it and forget it mode that makes it so simple and easy and even better you can expand it to be remotely controlled through your IT people. So the teacher doesn't even have to do anything but show up and plug in his laptop. So let's go into some of the actual big features of the product. You're going to get inputs and outputs. You get SDI input and output. You're going to get HDMI input and output. You get embedded audio. It's got HDMI, SDI. It's got a SD card reader to record to. You can also attach via USB in order to uh, record to a USB drive like a LACI or a GTEC drive. It attaches to your network, obviously. It's not a Wi-Fi device, it needs to be wired. And there's a reason for that because Wi-Fi is great, but when you need that reliability, you want to be hardwired in, and that's what this is in intended for. This is for lecture centers, this is for schools. Dual modes of operation, we want to go into those a little bit for the teacher, the professor. You've got picture in picture, where you can put your picture in any corner of the screen that you want. Can we bring this up full screen? Because I want to show something that's real cool. The other thing it'll allow you to do is side-by-side -side mode. What I think is really exciting about side-by-side -side mode is, is the folks at uh, Matrox are pretty smart about this. They realized, hey, you might be as wide as me, but most people aren't. You don't need a wide screen to actually put the show up. So, you know, they have it scrunched down a little bit so the PowerPoint or whatever you're presenting can be a little, little bit larger so you can get that shared screen. So if you go back to our shot of me with the shared screen, yeah, we're doing this through a expensive, you know, TriCaster with virtual sets and stuff like that. But for a lecture, for a professor, he just wants to basically make sure that the presentation that he's doing, be it a PowerPoint, Excel, Word, whatever he's going over, can be seen by his students both in the classroom and while he's streaming live and what he's recording for later lecture capture and use. So we love that. Another feature that it has, it's very cool if you're a school that's gotten into this, is the viewer defined layouts. That's where the student actually, if you use certain CDNs for your streaming and certain uh, specialized uh, players for your stream, third party players, you can actually allow the student to determine whether he wants to watch the professor, the professor and the PowerPoint or the whole PowerPoint presentation. Pretty cool taking that up another notch, which is very nice. Also, one of the things we love about this, it's simple to integrate. Let's start bringing in Frank in now because this is where we're going to really bring him in. It can integrate with your different uh, school systems you use like uh, Moodle, Canvas, Brightspace, Blackboard. But more than that, it integrates with the IT infrastructure that your tech people are using in the schools to allow them to do some really cool stuff. So I got a big slide up showing the big names in here that you guys work with, Frank. So first I want to introduce Frank Scartosi. Go way back with him. He's a director of sales at Matrox. He knows these products cold. He's one of the things that Frank does, unlike a lot of sales managers at his level, is he actually goes out in the field and meets with customers who are using these products, and that go, takes that back to the development team. And that's why these partners have emerged. When they first put this partner, to, this product together, this is a blank sheet. And we were yep. thinking about it for one lecture at a time. But then I believe it was a university that we won't name because my daughter goes to it, USC Trojans. <laughs> that came up to you and requested a, a larger scale on how to handle everything. So Frank, talk about all the partners in what we'll call the Monarch uh, ecosphere right now. Yeah, thanks Gary, and uh, thanks for the opportunity today. This is, uh, this is a great way for us to expose the LCS and EDU. And, and like Gary said, when we started out, and primarily we're a hardware manufacturer, we realized pretty early in the game that 
the hardware is a necessary component, but it's really has to be invisible. It needs to be there, but it needs to be invisible and it doesn't need to uh, break the workflow of what a professor or IT professional in EDU uh, markets or, or segments uh, really want to work um, like. So when I, I got into it, I realized, you know, we need guys uh, that are in the uh, video management uh, software space, guys like Ensemble, Kaltura, TechSmith, you know, and uh, fundamentally, if, if you these names are new to you, really, uh, you boil them down, they're the YouTube for education space. So YouTube is a library of videos, right? So Kaltura, Ensemble, TechSmith, they are all ways to give you a library of videos organized per professor, per school of medicine, department of law, or what have you, but they organize it in a, in a way that makes all of this video that we're publishing um, accessible very easily. And I love the way the guys at Kaltura describe themselves. Kaltura describes themselves as basically the ocean of uh, video for the classroom. And we, Matrox, are a river. We're one of the ways to get vid um, content to the, to, the, to the students, right? So in the case like uh, Indiana University, like Gary has up there, um, they came to us and they, they you know, they, it, it wasn't as if lecture capture was new. Before we got into it, lecture capture was existing for 10 years. And the guys at uh, Indiana actually had a, a very, you know, rudimentary PC-based solution, proprietary, uh, for over five years in their, in their school across campus. And effectively, they, they really needed at one point to realize, you know, I need something a lot lower cost if I have to expand the footprint, something that's very easy to use. And most importantly, moving away from an I.O. card, a PC and software, an appliance that really would help me keep the maintenance cost low, which, believe it or not, could be very, very expensive to a, a school like Indiana University. Um, so that's when the head of the classroom technology really came to us and, and, and said, you know what? And in fact, they were a Monarch HD customer. They're using it for just streaming live events. Said, we need an appliance that's invisible in the classroom, but you absolutely need it to work with my video management system. And that's where we, we, we got introduced to Kaltura and started working very closely to them. Effectively, our goal was to make it so that the professor really just needs to focus on teaching. Show up when you're supposed to show up, and that unit in the classroom turns on, and it publishes um, to where it needs to be. So really, it's it's a, a way to keep the, the, the behavior that they're used to the same. So to, to the guys at Indiana University, the solution was clear. It was Kaltura and Matrox LCS. And they already had, and most, most of the time you'll see that schools of that uh, size already make their choice on VMSs, and they were already a Kaltura house. So as Kaltura works with other hardware out there, uh, as it worked with their proprietary solution, they really, did, really set their sights on an appliance, and they tested nine different solutions before settling on Matrox. And you know, I'd like to spend some time to, to, to explain why they settled on the Monarch LCS. Number one, unlike, and this we found out after we got into the market, maybe my, my stance would have been a little different, but we have a low one-time cost. It's one, end, one, one unit at $24.95 before the EDU discount, and that's it. You don't have to pay me an annual fee, which is new to me because, you know, Gary, we sell it. It's yours forever. Yep. We, but, but getting into the space, we realized people would sell uh, perpetual. Subscription models, right. Yeah. Right. And, and that was welcome from the EDU space. So that was, that was key to, Cal, to the guys at Indiana. Next was the seamless integration with Kaltura. Because of the fact that, like you had up there on one slide, you know, Blackboard, Moodle, these are the tools that the professors and the students interface, uh, a way to access their content, whether it be their documents or, in this case, video. And one of the ways that that we get published to the Kaltura or is uh, sorry black uh, blackboard or, or or Moodle is through the Kaltura media space. So we weren't changing the IT professional's uh, behavior at all. He was going in scheduling um, the the monarchs in various rooms, 
uh, per schedule, per department, and and it was just publishing where it was supposed to. Now, in the case of Indiana, they chose, Gary had a picture-in-picture, side-by-side, as operating modes that uh, you can you can work with. What Indiana chose to do was, we have another mode that there, Gary doesn't have up there just because it's very hard to show. It's called dual isolated mode. And this mode means I have two sources, like, uh, and, that, and that's the result and what Gary's showing you up there is the result. And so we have two sources. Let's not decide where to put those sources, picture in picture, side by side. Let's not cook that content so that in the review process, the the viewer cannot move that that uh, content around. So through Kaltura's multi-stream player, now students and professors are the directors of how they want to see the, the video. So instead of having a picture in picture on very important information that can't be moved, you could decide, you know what, I just want to focus on the PowerPoint or the document camera at any given time. So that's how they, they choose to use it on, on the layouts. And, and how Frank, I, the I, student, the viewer, gets to control how absolutely. he wants to experience. Now, they have to have a special player. What, what's like the JW player, I think, supports that? In the case of Indiana, it's Kaltura's multi-stream player. Okay. If you dial down, if you really dig into what those multi-stream players are, some of them are, just like you said, JW OEM versions of, uh, but the the end viewer doesn't care. He doesn't even know. All he sees is a little branded player that he clicks and he has all of those things that you see right behind you, the modes of side by side, picture in picture and so on. So so that's the beauty of the Indiana workflow. They schedule it through uh, Kaltura. They record it, in their case, they record it to the Monarch's local storage. So whether it be USB uh, drive or in their case, SD card that's always in the unit. And they record all day on that unit. Now they've chosen to, uh, for most of their classrooms, they've chosen to record all of the material on, on, on that day locally. And they choose to FTP it to the central storage of the university so that the, the uh, students could pick it up later. The reason why they do that is the network is um, less busy right. during a, a normal operating. But there are classes that uh, I think it's the School of Medicine that the students require the material to be available just after the course. So it's possible. They can fool around with that. And okay, finish. Frank, we have a few other cases we get to, but before we get to that, you guys had to do some additional development for Indiana, if I recall correctly, and you put together this radar product. So I want to roll a little video of the radar product and you'll explain how yep. uh, Indiana's using it. So let's go to Dan Maloney. He's the product manager. He's going to tell us about how radar works. Perfect. With Monarch LCS radar. You get a complete picture of the status of all your Monarch LCS devices on a well laid out color coded dashboard. It can simultaneously interface with up to 1000 Monarch units, while up to 10 units are listed in the dashboard at once. When a specific device is selected, a preview window with view meters appears in the UI, allowing the operator to monitor the actual content being fed to the encoder. Further, the encoding schedule of the device is displayed. If Monarch LCS radar detects that a device has lost network connectivity or failed to execute a scheduled recording, an email will be sent out to a group of people so that a condition can be rectified ASAP. Finally, this dashboard allows an admin to drill down to get some detailed information about each device, including MAC address, IP address, as well as system logs. Should the admin want to take control of an individual device, he can do so by launching the command sense right from within the dashboard. All right, very cool, cool stuff. Talk about how Indiana had that as the missing piece that kind of tied the whole thing together. Yeah, so at one point when Indiana started, they started with, a, would say, about 20 classrooms. And uh, what they realized is that, you know, they installed our hardware in uh, classrooms where there was um, seven, anything above 30 uh, students, so 70 to 300 students. And it was classes that had more than one document, camera, PowerPoint presentation that they had to mix. What they realized is that after they had a certain footprint of 20 plus classrooms, especially Indiana University, the geography between buildings was uh, such that an IT professional couldn't get to the classrooms very easily. So they asked us if we had a, a one m a dashboard that can basically see all the units and control them um, should they need to be reset or they need to, uh, a different schedule to be set up. So we, we created this radar uh, mostly because of Indiana's request. 
And uh, like you said earlier, this was a free firmware upgrade once we had it and just put it out there. It makes the life of the people that are managing the classroom technology a lot easier. Uh, to Indiana's point, it's a must have. If we wanted a home run, if we wanted a big install in universities, we absolutely needed the radar. And that's why we created it. It's a very simple tool to manage, uh, like Dan said in the video, unlimited amount of, of units across campus. Cool, let's talk about another nice win for the Matrox Monarch LCS, that's at Stetson University. This is a partnership with a company we both work with very closely, Ensemble Video, who, like you said, is another company that's pulling all this stuff together. And then they're doing it with Wowza Systems as well. So uh, let's talk about Stetson University a little bit. Yeah, Stetson, they're the longest serving business school in Florida. And I love this case because uh, very much like the USC guys, they're using it in an experiential learning uh, capacity in that what they're doing is they're learning through role play and analysis. So what they do is what they needed was a low cost, easy to use a, a, a unit that could be scheduled like Indiana, but also could be started in ad hoc. So show up to the unit, press a button and off you go. But again, the unit had to be invisible. So the solution was Monarch LCS with Ensemble and Ensemble Video was uh, one of the first VMSs that we had to work with uh, through an opportunity. I think Stetson was the, the one that, that put us together. But what they do is that students, uh, business students that are learning sales uh, techniques, um, schedule the unit or the lab that they have to go into. And before they do, they set up whether they want a side-by-side, picture-in-picture, and they record their sessions for them to, to, to go through it and analyze how they did. Now, like you see here in the workflow diagram, unlike Cal, um, the Kaltura Indiana model, where everything's being recorded locally in the classroom, what Ensemble's workflow is, is that they basically ask the Monarch LCS to stream the content live through the network directly to the Wowza server. And that that is where our RTMP stream is being uh, accepted and recorded on the Wowza streaming engine, okay? And as you can see there, then Wowza takes care of publishing that to Blackboard um, um, or any other um, uh, elements, yeah. learning management system. So, so it's really being used as uh, like remote training. The people are actually role playing with their, their sales, whatever their assignment is. It's being recorded and they can come back and see how they did for self-assessment or for submission to the professor. Yeah, yeah, and one, one of the cool uh, features that Ensemble has in their software is um, that, that Stetson uses is that they have this automatic captioning tool so that as the video is being recorded, all of what is being said is being captioned. So from a review perspective, you can see how it's easy for a student to go directly to the points of interest in the video or the professor to see how did they do when they were trying to explain this part or trying to cool. sell me on. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Let's talk about another use case. Well, before we go to those other use cases, I want to let you let people know those were two LCSs. It's a family of Monarch products. There's also the Monarch HDX, which is doesn't have the side-by-side -side and the different ways of picture-in-picture, uh, -picture, but does give you two sources and two uh, two records. That's the HDX and the base Monarch H2, which is the original product, uh, you know, for under $1,000. So let's talk a little bit about some case studies that involve other products. Let's start with the HDX case study uh, at OSU. Frank, we're going to leave this graphic up on full screen, but you should start talking. Sure. Um, basically, uh, again, EDU space, very popular with monarchs. And in the case, sometimes we get into there, uh, into it via the live uh, webcasting, and sometimes we get into it via lecture capture. But it all comes down to they see the value in how the monarch family, in OSU's case, uh, able to reach and expand their audience because they they made it very, very uh, clear that they really wanted uh, a commitment to, to – uh, be better at outreach. So whether it be convocation, sporting events, or, or guest speakers that come to the university, they needed a simple appliance that had flexible inputs. And by that, I mean, they didn't know what type of equipment, depending on what event, whether it's sporting, convocation, whether it's an SDI input or HDMI. And HDX, having the ability to take either SDI or HDMI, made it so that that you know they didn't have to worry about what kind of video input was coming in right now one of the cool things they did and i know this because we've had a lot of success with these bundles is they put the little roland v1 hd mixers together and those are a four input mixer with the monarchs that's we we've had tremendous success with that actually in worship 
where House yeah. of the Worship will use the Roland mixer for their mixing, then they'll use their Monarch to stream out and also to record the program that exactly. they're putting together. And that bundle comes in under $2,000 for those two together with the base HD, the HDX a little bit more. But that's one of the exciting things about the, the Monarch. It could be a piece of a bigger workflow, which is why we're bringing in these user stories so you can see that it answers a lot of solutions. It's a piece of solutions that are very cool. And in the universities, when you can put a bunch of them and deploy them throughout the uh, university, and you can have your IT people manage as opposed to each teacher being having to taught or professor how to use it, the acceptance and the usage goes up because the professor doesn't have to worry now, how do I hit this? Which button do I use again? So it's, well, it's there's an automation factor that makes it more comfortable for educators to actually use the product. And that's what it's about. We want them to use it. So that's where the value is. Yeah, and in Noah's use case, it was the, the reason why they settled on the HDX was the fact that with one unit, they, they keep their, their setup cost and time down. And, and like you said, with the production value of having a, a very simple switcher like the Roland attached in front of it, you could go to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And to them, it was very important because they saw all of a sudden they went where the viewers are. They were only streaming to their website at one point and realized, well, no one's coming to these convocations. We're getting a lot of complaints from family members that couldn't be here. And all of a sudden, when they went with this unit, they hit Facebook, YouTube, all social media broadcasting venues that are being used, you know. So that, that really helped OSU maintain their commitment to be more accessible. And, and that was possible with, with this very simple unit in a mode. Uh, that was one thing I think you're alluding to is you know, you just set it up in the mode to stream in the, 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 where you want it to and get to the event, hook up your sources and press go off uh, and off you go. Cool. And one of the things that uh, I want to talk about next is FIU, Florida International University, because in there you integrated with a very big name in the AV space, and that's Crestron. So talk about that one a little bit now. Yeah, that was actually quite cool because uh, effectively FIU needed a way to get to uh, all of their students. Um, and what I mean is they have uh, a, a central location they call the pit in on their campus where they held uh, pep rallies, homecoming, special announcements. But it was physically too small to actually house all of the people that were trying to come to it. So they needed a way and working with one of our VARs, uh, ART, they rec ART recommended to FIU saying, you know what, if you use a Monarch HD in this case, you have a very easy uh, tool to, to basically stream to all of your students, stream and record. So why they chose the, the, the Monarch HD, inexpensive, it's the, the, the baby brother uh, in the Monarch family. It streams to Wowza, so RTMP to Wowza was very, very simple. Um, the recording, so that they could do highlight reels later, was also key, because even though they're streaming at one quality, nothing prevents them to record a Blu-ray quality for a, a, a high-level highlight reel. And ultimately, the last thing was the Crestron integration. The fact that we give away um, a Crestron module for all of our Monarchs on our website, um, really uh, clinched this one because it wa FIU was a Crestron infrastructure and uh, being able to start and stop the Monarch HD in the pit with one simple button that they, they're very familiar with on the Crestron module was, was key to them. And that was really the reason why the Monarch HD because of price, ease of use, and the ease of integration with the Crestron unit. And Frank, you brought something up a little earlier that I want to bring to everyone's attention because I think it's one of the most important features of the entire Monarch family of products. And that is, is you can stream at the resolution that's right for your CDN or your streaming. You can record at the highest possible resolution you want for archiving, post-production, what you have to do. There are a lot of encoders out there that also record, but they tend to record at the same setting you're streaming at, which yeah. limits the quality. Like you said, this could be in full glory, Blu-ray quality for recording to, but you can stream to whatever stream path you need, say 720p for Facebook, you know? So that's real important. And I think that's something that a lot of people uh, don't, it's not, we don't overlook it, you and I, Frank, but I think a lot of people forget about it when they're talking yeah. to customers about the product and selling it. All right. I want to go into this slide if we could bring it up because I think it's real important and that is as we're reaching out here to universities, colleges, people who have a chance to deploy multiple Monarch, LCS, HDX, HDs in their classroom or their lecture centers. One of the things I want to talk about here that's real important is that, Frank, you have Matrox sales and workflow specialists who if the opportunity is big enough, people can call us or call Matrox and they can drop us an email. We'll find out the base, the base parameters of the whole thing. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, at that point, then you can bring in the experts who are going to come in and I'll say, you know, these guys look like it's an opportunity at this university. You know, let's contact them. You'll have people call them, draw schematics, even visit if the opportunity is there, which I think is so important. And you'll also work with the control software they have if they're yeah. Kaltura, if they're Crestron, whatever they're using Ensemble, or you can also suggest other things they may need. And that level of workflow support and specialization, I think is great. You can buy it directly from video guys if it's designed as is, or if you feel you need a local dealer, we'll work with the folks at Matrix. We'll get a local dealer who come in there and work with you. If you've got a guy who you've been buying all your gear from, that's fine. What we're pointing out here is that a lot of the people watching our shows are the people who want to do the video content, but this is really something that you got to sell your IT department on. And what we're telling you is we can deploy IT experts who can come in and give you the ability to get this product into your university. Yeah. And we'll work with you through the whole process. Video Guys accepts purchase orders from uh, universities, colleges, public school systems. We have additional discounts available for larger deployments. So you're already getting the educational pricing, but you know, if it's a really big deployment, we'll work with you. And the other thing I think is real important, and this is something that, you know, Frank brought to us that we work with Frank on, and that is, is we can work with you in rolling out your deployment over multiple budget cycles, which we know the educational world goes. So your goal may be to get to 100, but the reality may be it's 20 to 25 a year or 25 a semester. We'll work with you in laying that out with the PO, put it, helping you get that whole thing through. So I talked about what video I to do. Talk a little bit about your team and what they've done for some of these uh, installations we talked about, the case studies. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. What we, what we have here is a team of people that could really walk through and understand your problem and figure out how we can fold in, whether it's the solution we have or it, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is how our API for the monarchs even existed. Is because at one point, you know, working through one of these opportunities, we realized that you know maybe Crestron is not the unit that you want to uh, use to control. Maybe it's the AMX that you want to use. So we have this API that you can actually use, and it's very open. We're not closed. The solution's not closed. Yeah, it could work off the shelf, but if it it needs to do something that you want to integrate with some other piece of equipment, that's where you use our our, our API. And our team is is here to walk through that with you. And if it looks like it's a, a workflow, we could we can help you with. We also have um, gear that we, we, you know, you can request a demo. Requesting a demo, I like to always say, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get one automatically. We walk through it and make sure that, because I don't want you to waste your time or, or to, to figure out that it doesn't fit. So you request a demo, we walk through it. And many times, you know, our demo units stay sold because of the fact that before you even get it, we know that the environment you're in, and you know, it's just a matter of feeling it and, and working through it. And, and I want to go with that a little bit deeper because we say demo. What we actually are talking about is if the, if it's a qualified opportunity between video guys and Matrox or another dealer in Matrox, there is a pool of eval units that will be sent to you for your IT and your yourself and your people to bang on and use and you know what what we ask for that is if we're sending you a unit we expect regular feedback on what's going on what problems what are the solutions how's it looking and we want to work with you either through video guys or through frank's team to find out you know if something's not doing what you thought it was why what, what what's what's coming up short and we've had revisions we've had deals quite honestly that got held up while the matrix folks wrote an extra little bit of code to make something work and I only bring that up, not promising it for everyone, because not every company I deal with is going to do that. And the folks at Matrox do. That's one of their advantages they have of being a small, privately owned, nimble company, you know, that they can re put these resources towards what I will call, for some people, for us it's a big deal, but compared to what the big guys like a Grass Valley sells, you know, it's not going to be a million dollar deal. But, you know, to me, if a guy wants to order 10 or 20 of these, that, that's a big deal. And I want to give that guy the same service that he'd get from the big guys if he was ordering millions of dollars worth of stuff. And you feel the same way, Frank. Absolutely, I'll take the million dollar deal any day, but <laughs> it's part of being Canadian, Gary. We, we, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, definitely we, we stand behind our products and we have a really great reputation in terms of quality of product and support. So I think what Gary's getting at is once you, once we work together as a, you know, customer, we respect the fact that, you know, to get to that point and, and, and spend your hard earned money with us, that you've shopped around and if if we we can make your life easier that's what we're here for
Great. Frank, I want to thank you. That brings us to the end of today's program. Frank Scartosi from Matrix doing a great job, not only talking about how the Monarchs work and the software that's involved, but actually giving you a little peek inside some of those deals. And those case studies are available on the Matrix website and the Video Guys website. But I think the way Frank described it a little more in depth of how they came about and how they organically grew gives you a better idea of what's, what's so great about having your institution get behind Matrix and centralizing it and making it a core part of their lecture capture and streaming solution. So great job, Frank. I want to thank you a lot. I want to talk about some upcoming shows we have. We're going to do a new tech NDI technology uh, show on what's new with uh, NDI technology. I'm super excited about that show because we're trying to get in a special guest from new tech. Can't tell you who it is, but I'm super excited about that. The folks at Bird Dog, I don't know if you follow them on uh, social media, but they've been in the factory. The Mer Bird Dog Mini is imminent to be released. We hope to have that. Some exciting news out of Bird Dog. And we've got some other shows coming in which you think are going to be really great as well. Not ready to tell you about them. We, our calendar's been pretty busy. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in to today's show. Video Guys, Newsday Tuesday. You give us, today was 30 minutes because our guest Frank liked to talk a lot. But in all honesty, it was all good stuff, Frank, just breaking your chops. It was a great show today. You give us 30 minutes on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. We're going to tell you all about the products we sell. We stream it live on Facebook now. In about an hour or so, the show will be available on YouTube for people to download and on our blog. We thank everyone who watched the show. And for those of you who see the show later, thank you very much. This is Gary from Video Guys, Newsday Tuesday. Peace. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.